coming on. Was there any doubt in your mind that Brady and the Bucks were going to come back and win it? Not at all. You <laughs> knew they were coming back. Yeah. You knew they were. Yeah. It's just a matter of time. It was written in the script. It had to be. Speaking of scripts, it's a perfect time to talk about this. There were two storylines in the Rams-Bucks game, right? And they don't have to battle each other. And I think that's the point where people have a problem with the storyline is if you make if you say one story, you're making an excuse for the other story. There were two storylines in that game. One, Matthew Stafford did everything he was asked to do. He did everything right. He won them that game on that last pass to Cooper Cup. I don't care what people say. If he doesn't complete that pass in which they kicked the field goal and win it, it's going to overtime. And guess who's going to win that game in overtime? Mm. It's time B. This is another comeback. That's one storyline. He did everything right. As Matt Stafford in that game, he played a damn good game. Give him his credit. Now, to the other storyline, Tom Brady would have won that game if he would have had either Godwin or A.B., who left him hanging. We'll get into that, too. He could have had either one of them. Tristan Wirfs, Tristan Wirfs, second-year player, all-pro, right tackle, amazing player. He gets hurt. His backup comes in and gets hurt. They're rotating centers. Like it got, I mean, rotating linemen. It got to the point where you can see Tom Brady look like I've never seen him look before. Like, well, never, like he was dropping back. Hold on, Dad. He was fight. scared. He was dropping back. Not only looking scared, he was short arm and stuff. He was blind throwing stuff. There was a pass on the, the drive before they scored. I want to say it was the drive after – it was a drive before because they had two drives in a row which they didn't score, and then they scored because they had they were down seven. They had two drives, didn't score, and then they scored on the third one. It was the first time that they did it. The drive before the per, the uh, personal foul that we thought was going to be a you know give them a first down, yeah. it ended up being a dead ball foul. He had Scotty Miller wide open in the middle of the field on fourth down. Yeah. And he couldn't see him. He didn't want to see him because he was so, like, corralled and he had been doing this. When have you ever seen Tom Brady in a clutch moment miss a wide-open wide receiver? I certainly have never seen him. That in itself, the Tampa Bay Buccaneers would have beat the Rams. The Rams wanted to give him that game, and I understand it's a part of football. Injuries do happen. Things do happen. But, man, if he would have had one of those, if you get Tristan Wirfs, Tampa wins. Antonio Brown, Brian, I mean, Antonio Brown, they win. God went. They win. So two storylines. One, Stafford did everything he was supposed to do and more. They won the game. The other one was injuries really, really played the Tampa Bay Buccaneers, especially Tom Brady. Well, here's another thing about interesting about Matthew Stafford. In the last four to six games, you have not seen the Detroit Lion Matthew Stafford at all. Mm -hmm. Early in the season, you did. Matthew Stafford has learned that he does not have to win the game and make throws that he shouldn't have been making. In the last few weeks, he's been making very smart decisions. Is Early, that coach? Is that is that culture? What is that? I, I, I think it's Mixture. I think it's all of that. Yeah. I, I think he realized early early in the year as a Ram, he was doing some things that you saw mm -hmm. done here at Ford Field. Like he's still doing it, mm -hmm. but they may have a team no coming. But he finally settled into, I don't have to make that throw. I can throw this out of bounds and take the sack and live for another day because my defense is going to give me the ball back without them scoring or at least holding them to a field goal. And now he doesn't make the throws that made us all kind of cringe when he's here at Detroit. Tom Brady. Tom Brady would have, to your point, I think, would have had an opportunity to come back in the game. But they don't have a defense. They don't have the pass rush. And I have been a fan of having Todd Bowles get another head coaching job. Uh -oh. But his performance as a defensive coordinator in that game bordered an atrocious. What he did late in that game is he did a slot blitz off the slot, off of Cooper Cup, and he put Antoine Winfield Jr., who's a safety, covering the best wide receiver in a the second game. Your safety at that. One on one. How does you that can't happen? Do that. I have no idea. That is crazy. And conversely, if you want to look at uh, defensive coordinators, how, how does Leslie Frazier allow it to happen at 13 seconds, too, for the Bills? Yeah, exactly. Yeah, you know, the I mean, Bills rushed four guys, but the fourth guy on the left side of the line was standing like behind the three defensive linemen. So he didn't even I – watched, I watched the game again last night. So, You're sick, man. I'm sick. <laughs> <laughs> he, on those two plays in right. those 13 seconds, he wasted a guy doing nothing right. yeah. in that defense. He played him almost off the line like a linebacker, but he didn't do anything. I, just, I saw him. I'm like, what is this guy doing? Instead of putting him back in the middle of the field where they hit Kelsey and, and Hill. The whole freaking middle of the field was wide open. Wow, I got a great, I got a question, Dan. You know, it, it, it lines up to, 
You talked about Stafford in terms of like the last couple of weeks. Last couple of weeks, he's been phenomenal in terms of exactly what you said. He's Absolutely. definitely he's just he's just sat in there and been himself. He's like, hey, you know what? I don't have to go. I got Cam Akers. I got Odell Beckham. I have Cooper Cup. I have a great defense on the other side where I have great defensive players, a pretty good defense. So he's done that. But if you remember December, he had five interceptions. He had eight interceptions in December. He had four pick sixes in December. Had a horrible and end even of the, the year. last game of the season, he throws an he throws an interception at the end of the game to the, to let the 49ers get into the playoffs. Maybe they had a conversation about that. To your point, the question I want to ask you. Do you think him and Josh McVay had a conversation at the last game of the year after the San Francisco game? Because it seems like he turned into a completely different player in the playoffs from where he was in December. Going into the, the, to the playoffs, I guarantee you the Rams were scared. Josh McVay or Sean McVay might have been a little bit scared. Stafford himself probably was like, damn, am I going to do the Stafford special? He slowed special? him down. He slowed him down. I, I, I guarantee you him and Sean had one of those Cabo talks over a glass of bourbon because he looked completely different yeah, yeah, one did. week later. Yeah, he did. So uh, I can't – I'm I'm probably the biggest Stafford fan not named Stafford. I'm huge. I, I love Blasky's the guy. Dan has got you beat. No, <laughs> yeah, that's true. Dan, Dan I, will, I will wrestle him over who's the biggest <laughs> Stafford fan. I will wrestle him for that for that title. I love uh, him. But, but, but uh, Matthew Stafford has not shown any of us that he, can, he has it within himself to kind of rein himself in and not make those – those throws and be become a different guy in a matter of weeks in the playoffs. So it's got to be Sean McVay. Yeah, it's got to be the culture he's around and the coach he's around. Sean Sean McVay is a it, it, again another young guy in an old body. Sean McVay is a pretty mature guy on how he handles the media, on how he handles his team. If if he didn't know what he was doing, there are a lot of things that would come out about this team mm -hmm. in the media and in the public. That has it hasn't. And it hasn't been. So that's because Sean McVay really has a good culture in place. Yeah. People trust him. And Matt, obviously, Matt Stafford trusted him to kind of listen what it is. And that's why Matt has been a different quarterback in the playoffs. And the and last thing I say, Ryan, is you're 100% right. Because there was a play. When they played the opening round of the playoffs, there was a play where I, I've talked about it. And I said, you know what? Oh, shoot. Here comes the Matt Stafford of all. It was a play in which it was in the third quarter, took the snap, and he pulled a move like he was Kyler Murray. Yeah, he thought he was uh, Russell Russell Wilson early in his career. He did a reverse spin move. As soon as I saw that reverse spin move, I said, I've never seen Matthew Stafford do a reverse mm -hmm. spin move. I said, here it comes. This is, this, this is what Detroit fans are waiting for. This is what they're waiting to see. This is why they were okay with him leaving. And he reversed out of there and threw the ball away. I said, somebody been talking to this boy. Ain't the same guy I know. The Matthew Stafford critics here in town, they have one more, one more opportunity to say, see, I told you so, and that's this upcoming week. If he gets to the Super Bowl, he's out of the woods. Ian yeah. Rappaport reporting uh, that the Saints will interview Dennis Allen, considering the, to be the leading candidate, and Lions DC, Aaron Glenn, for wow. their head coaching position. Dennis Allen's from where? He's there. He's oh, he's there. Right, right, he's yeah. there. Yeah. Oh, he's yeah. Yeah. All right, That's good. where they'll go. Aaron Glenn, uh, of course, Formerly uh, on the staff there in New Orleans uh, under Sean. So is Dan Campbell. Payton. So is Dan Campbell. Um, that big uh, Sean Payton will make a hell of an OC in Detroit. Yeah, yeah, yeah he, uh, he wants to take it easy. Guys, the game was so good. Maz watched it again yesterday, and he watched it again, still hoping that Josh Allen got a chance with the ball in yeah. overtime. He did not. Uh, we're going to talk to Stan about his overtime uh, thoughts. Also, Sean McDermott with some really, really great quotes. Uh, today on that loss. 13 seconds that he will never forget. I'm going to read those for you and uh, get Stan's thoughts on overtime. A uh, lot of viewers in that game. 51 million viewers that beat that. Wow. Unbelievable. Most ever, right, Max? That's it. For, for, that, for a divisional game yep. in yeah, the last five years. Yeah, okay, okay. Yeah. Hermione and Edwards. Who was Sports Network? Bottom line. <laughs>